Another day, another f***ing science voiceover. They could at least pay us for our time. Bet Eleanor comes into the voiceover booth and interrupts, just as always. Bit harsh, that? Oh crap, sorry, you weren't meant to hear that. Freudian slip of my internal monologue. I actually adore when you come into the voiceover booth. Oh, you have an inner monologue, do you? I don't have that. Really? You don't have an inner dialogue? You know, when you're just, like, narrating to yourself in your own head? Interesting. Guess I'm just really articulate. We can't all be articulate, can we, Eleanor? Excuse me? Sorry, slipped again. Tell me, what's it like in your head, then? Right, well, actually having no inner monologue is quite common. I may not have a conscious stream of thought when I feel something. I just feel it. If my boss asked me to do something I didn't want to do, I wouldn't curse them verbally in my head, but I would feel frustrated. The middleman, who would be my inner dialogue, just isn't there. Some people also find it hard to communicate verbally, because it takes more time and effort to make sense of their thoughts. The closest some get to an inner monologue is getting a song stuck in their head. Wow, I really thought everyone thought the same way. I mean, I can imagine being physically angry for a few seconds without thinking it verbally. My heart would be racing, maybe my shoulders shake, muscles tense up, but I can't imagine being aware of any of my physical emotions without thoughts as language. Well, just two sides of the same coin, really. At least I won't make any Freudian slips like you. Ha, <laughs> true. I may make Freudian slips, but at least I'm not a know-it-all who interrupts people when they're trying to record important voiceovers. She's insufferable, really. I heard that. Oh, sh